Hello everyone, I'm Mas Banker from Kaiser Power Electronics and welcome back to another vintage computer teardown. And today this is actually going to be a teardown and not just a small demonstration of how this laptop works because this old and really nice uh, ThinkPad 770 is not working anymore. So we can take it apart and see what's inside, how it's built and uh, what made this one of the uh, late 90s preferred professional and business use laptops because this was end of the line oh not end of the line but this was really uh, high class laptops in the uh, 19 uh, from 1997 when this is from um, it retailed at about uh, 3000 US dollars back then um, this was the last model in the 700 series of the ThinkPad from IBM. As you can see, it features the old original IBM ThinkPad logo before uh, Lenovo bought up the company uh, or this part of the brand much later. Um, the uh, 700 series was actually used quite a lot by NASA at the International Space Station. So you can find many pictures of this laptop being used. Uh, in weightless conditions. The uh, 770 model featured a uh, Pentium 1 uh, 200 megahertz uh, CPU, had 32 megabyte uh, PC66 RAM, um, had a rather nice uh, screen. Take a look here. It's a nice big 13.7 inch screen that runs a resolution at uh, 1024 times 768 pixels. Uh, the later models, because they uh, they made uh, some uh, models called E and up to Z, uh, was eventually upgraded with a even higher resolution screen, a Pentium 2 mobile processor, 160 megabyte of RAM, and uh, eventually it also got upgraded to using the AGB uh, bus instead of just having PCI. So uh, let's take a closer look at the different ports and so on. For a laptop that is uh, nearing uh, 20 years old, it's in a remarkably good condition, except that it doesn't work. But uh, no keys are not working, it has its nice little LCD display with battery information and such on. We have the original Microsoft Windows 95 stickers, Intel Inside Pension 1. Here we have the uh, on button. Battery doesn't work anymore either. At the back side we have the USB port, which is one of the first laptops, high-end laptops to have this. We have serial port, parallel port, perhaps some kind of SCSI interface, VGA out, docking station uh, connector. We have the uh, PCM uh, CIA uh, slots here. Has a ISDN modem here. Also has a regular modem built-in. Let's see what the other card is. Oh, this is the actual the modem. So it has both an ISDN and a uh, 33.6 uh, modem, and also features a 3.5 inch disk drive. See at the bottom here that it used to be supplied by 16 volt DC. And uh, says actually here that it's manufactured in the United Kingdom. Which uh, is a little funny because if you read up on these models it actually says online that these are manufactured in the USA. But uh, let's get this uh, taken apart and see what's inside. Okay, so now I have removed all these stickers, so let's try and see if we can get the screen taken apart as the first thing. It just has a few screws here at the front. Hopefully it does not take much more than that. See, we have a, a few additional screws here. What we have sitting here is the backlight inverter. You see that we have the high voltage part sitting here. The data connection uh, over here goes through this hinge. You 
Seems that the whole uh, screen, assemb screen assembly uh, is pretty good mounted uh, with these uh, side belt here. Oh, there seems to be another screw up here. Oh, yeah. And just like that. So here we can see the uh, the data connection up to the uh, LCD itself, and this is just a ABS plastic shell. So we can leave that on for now and uh, remove the other screws here at the front. And there the keyboard assembly went. These uh, two small uh, black squares here are the uh, front speakers. See that it actually has a uh, a rather large bass baffle here. So I don't know how the sound was uh, in this system, but they used quite a lot of space uh, on giving a lot of volume to the speaker. So. There's a chance it was actually pretty good. So if you have used the, this laptop before, please uh, comment. Uh Light let come off here. Here we have the uh, the hard drive, 5.1 gigabyte, and a little funky cover. The hard drive uh, already had a lot of bad clusters and uh, RAM modules seems to be damaged because it would constantly uh, crash due to memory issues. So you see here it's a uh, 5120 5, megabyte. Um, doesn't really say much else. So this is a regular ID drive, it seems. I could try to hook this up to my uh, own PC and see if I can retrieve any interesting data from it. Move some of these uh, side bays. Whoops. Now what do we have here? Has uh, three small connectors, maybe some screen battery, and not quite sure what that output is. It says MP MPEG, so this is probably a uh, MPEG encoding card, decoding card. So it's just hardware acceleration for uh, video playback graphics. And it also seems to have the battery pack sitting on the other side, which is a lithium ion battery. Uh, there's not quite any other specs of uh, current capabilities. So this is a pretty good test of uh, how well built a computer this actually is. There it goes. Here we have the uh, BIOS uh, backup battery. Take that out. So Actually, this uh, chip says uh, Trident, so this is the standard graphics card that the 700 series was shipped with, or the 750. Uh, it's a uh, 2 megabyte RAM graphics card, so not a uh, whole lot of fun there. I see that the metal block here is actually just a fan housing that connects down to uh, 
has a bit of uh, fins uh, on the inside, so this uh, connects down to the other metal part to actually act as a heat sink to the whole metal construction on the inside. So you can gently lift out the graphics card here. You can see that this is only with 2 MB of RAM instead of it could have had with 4 MB. Or maybe it is with 4 MB but could have been upgraded to 8. See that this is much more modularly, uh, modularly built than any modern laptop is where you have just one motherboard containing all the parts. Up here we seem to have the uh, we have the USB port sitting at the back. There's uh, the uh, sound card, microphone, power on button so it has a bit of uh, power supply. Up here a lot of uh, diodes and uh, capacitors. Not quite sure. Ah, okay, this is the the built-in modem. It's an IBM chip. Oh, nice little quick fix here with a uh, yellow wire. So, was a little bug that had to be corrected after it was all manufactured. Over here we have the uh, PCM CIA slots. Also comes on a module for itself. And this also witness that uh, this uh, laptop could come in many different configurations with different options. On the later models you could get a DVD drive and also for NASA they were rebuilt with different specs, different voltages, etc. to uh, suit their needs on the space station. So this is actually the whole heatsink assembly for the CPU. That's not much, but by today's uh, standards. And here we have the CPU card itself. This is how that connects down to the motherboard to uh, connect us with a lot of pins on. This is actually uh, the uh, first slot CPU that I see implemented like this. We can take a look at this under the microscope uh, to see what it uh, actually looks like. Now the last few screws and the motherboard should come out. And then here on the back side we can see that there is the PCI bus controller from Texas Instruments and there is a whole lot of botched in wires here. One, two, three. Yeah. We have three, four corrections which is done after the fabrication of these motherboards. And I actually also think that we had another botch in wire up here near the uh, the RAM controller. So that is what you find inside a 20 year old ThinkPad. Over on the left side, right above me, is the 280 pin mobile module connector. This is what connects the uh, CPU card module to the motherboard. Uh, we have the CPU itself, which is a 233 MHz uh, CPU, which we can see uh, a little up close here in a uh, USB microscope uh, movie that's running. Here we can also see the uh, very thin uh, data lines that goes in a uh, thin uh, plastic uh, cable out to the uh, soldering points on the card itself. The uh, CPU has uh, 4.5 million transistors um, on a 250 nanometer technology uh, die. 
Below the CPU, we can see uh, one of the uh, level 2 cache uh, ICs. This is a 256 kilobyte chip. And when we get to the back side of the card, we can see the uh, other IC sitting there. The CPU runs at uh, 1.8 volts and uh, has to dissipate 5.5 watts. This also explains why the heat sinking uh, can be so minimal for uh, this CPU. Now in the other um, USB microscope video that I'm uh, showing right now, we can see the uh, very thin gold wires. After I removed this uh, plastic cover, the brown one that was all around the uh, die area and package. And we can see some of the details that is uh, printed into this. As you can see, these are very, very fine lines, and this uh, magnification, I think it's around, around 50 times. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the back side. At the back side, we can notice that the big IC that we have here is the uh, Northbridge controller. And uh, the smaller uh, IC that sits uh, right behind me is the uh, second L uh, level 2 cache uh, IC. Right above this we have a gold stitched uh, area. And uh, this is uh, actually also up here uh, up close uh, from the microscope. This is how the CPU is heat synced uh, because the heat sink is not sitting on top of the CPU because the way this was constructed is that uh, this would be the top of today's uh, modern CPUs. So the whole uh, gold uh, ground stitching through the whole board uh, could conduct all the heat from the die and out to the heatsink sitting on this side. So I hope you enjoyed the teardown of this uh, old high-end laptop and uh, not be too sorry that it was torn apart. It was defective in many ways and well instead of getting thrown out it had to donate its life for an aut autopsy. Uh, but if you like my channel, if you want to watch more, you can always subscribe, you can visit my website at kaiserpowerelectronics.dk or come and discuss uh, all your own projects or see what I'm currently working on at highvoltageforum.net. Until next time, see ya!